what's going on we are back so we about to get this shirley fired up today so it'll be the first time we put some meat on it so i'm super excited about that i actually got some sleep last night so we about to get this thing cracking um shout out to the shirley community they've been reaching out giving me a lot of you know tips and tricks and how to run this monster so let me uh get this camera set up somewhere and we're gonna get this baby fired up all right here is the girl big shirley so um one of the things that i got from the shirley community was uh what is it carnivore kip i hope i didn't say your name wrong he was saying that when he fires his up he puts um, some charcoal down in there along with the first logs. So that's what we're gonna do today, is put some charcoal down in the middle. I have, these are the logs that are left over from, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> stupid gimbal. These are the logs that I heated up last time. I kept those aside from everything else because I want to make sure um, we got some nice dry wood to get started with. So let's get them put on and get this smoke rolling. Okay, so we're going to take some of this dry wood from last week from the seasoning videos and start getting this thing all set up. So that way we can get a nice cold bed going, but this one may be too big. Yep. So we'll leave that one out. I'm gonna have to cut that one in half. Man, this one may be, it was too big, but now it would have fit. So we got two going that way, and we're gonna take the second layer sideways kind of got to be diagonal. I got to start cutting these uh, splits down to the perfect size. So thanks to Kip, we're going to put some charcoal down in the middle. So from what he says, you can get your fire going a little bit quicker doing it that way. Thanks for the tip, Kip. And we're gonna get a few more stacked up. Throw this little ugly piece here. We'll throw that on top once we get the fire going. All right. So I learned a lot about this flamethrower last time. I almost blew myself up. You kind of have to put it on just a little, fire it up. I went, I turned it on a little too high and I almost blew the roof off my house. So let's get this baby fired up. So we're going to see how that rolls. 
right, let's get these stacks open. We're also gonna go ahead and open the doors for about 15 minutes to get a good draft. All right, so Mr. Hotch gave me a great tip to um, actually put a uh, level on here. And he said, what you want to do is angle the nose down to make sure once you start cooking in there that your grease is able to move towards the, um, the drain. So let's put a couple of cranks. And let's see how far that got us. Uh, I'm gonna go to the bubble is maybe. Let's see. So that basically put the um, the bubble a little slightly to the right. So we'll start there and see if that is enough to go ahead and uh, have the grease move that way because this is the first day that we're gonna put some meat on it. So the plan is I'm gonna leave these doors open. I got both the stacks open. Leave those um, open for about 15 minutes to see if we can start getting a good cold bed. So I'll check back in with you guys here shortly. Well, before things start getting too hot, I want to take one of these grates out. Oh. Hotch, there is the interior. You let me know uh, if you see what you were wanting to see down there. I'm gonna take one of these grates out just so I can have room to stack some wood in there and start drying it out. All right, so it's been chugging along with the uh, doors wide open and immediately I'm having much better success from the last cook, well not from the seasoning as far as fire management. So basically i um, got a good fire going. I'm still gonna let it continue to burn down until we got some nice embers and then I'll start adding wood. But I wanna get these doors shut down so we can start bringing this thing up the temp. There we go. All right, so um, we're just gonna let it keep going. And like I said, until we got some good embers and uh, then we will start worrying about temps. So what I'm actually doing today is I have a big old beef shank. If you don't know what a beef shank is, it is the shin of the cow. And if I'm wrong with that answer, please let me know. But from my understanding, that's what it is. Up here, I've had it for a while, but I had it in the freezer. I pre-seasoned it before I put it in the freezer with some salt, pepper, garlic, and some, I think I put cow cover on it. And then I also clipped, cut the, um, up here. I guess um, when you cut, make a cut up here, you're getting those tendons and then you allow that meat to, kind of shrink so basically it's gonna shrink from all the way up here to the bottom and I guess if you don't cut those tendons it's not going to shrink up I guess a lot of people have caught it like lollipop or whatever but um, yeah it's been probably been seasoned in my freezer for probably about four months so now that I thawed it out I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of Cajun fusion by Cattleman's grill what i'm trying to do today is i want to make me some uh pulled beef sandwiches so that's gonna be good i'm home alone my wife is gone she's out of town so i don't know how i'm gonna eat all this beef <laughs> so i guess with everything i do for quite some time it's gonna be an ex experiment so basically i went ahead and shut down the um, firebox door 
and then I put the uh, damper who knows maybe almost a third of the way open that may change as uh, temperatures rise also I know last time I made the mistake of well it really was a mistake because I didn't know um, this damper I had wide open and that uh, warmer box got close to 300 degrees so basically I'm gonna leave this one closed I'm only gonna have to use this one if I want to do direct cooking inside the warmer which I probably won't do but I'm not gonna say never so we are just gonna have this damper going which uh, lets the airflow go from the firebox into the chamber back over and into the warmer and back out um, I'm gonna see how this one goes with the dampers open I'm probably gonna Hotch was telling me that he keeps his I think he said the warming box damper closed you know a little bit but not all the way so we're gonna try you know a few things on this one I like to take notes on my cooks so I know what worked and what didn't but as you can see fire is going much better than when I seasoned it because I took the time to dry out some logs and then I went ahead and put some more splits in here to let those start warming up and as I use one I will add one later okay so while we are trying to get the wood burned down into some embers. Right now we are at 175 over here and we've gotten up to 200 over here and the warmer is lagging behind as it should be at only about 75 degrees. Um, I was asking a lot of questions about the pro ports as to what people were using and what fit and most said either you know make a little cut or go with a fireboard because their probes are thinner. This is the insert although I do not want to do plastic surgery on Shirley quite yet. I'm going to see if I can take one of my probes. See, I didn't even understand, you know, how the, the whole probe port worked until just now when I took it apart. So let's get this one. I'm going to see now that I've seen that it's a um, rubber piece. I'm going to see if maybe I can uh, get the probe through there before I put this back in here. Maybe I can use my um, Thermaworks, but even if it works, I've already bought the fireboard. So let's see what happens. All right, back. So this is the, um, the insert and this is a Thermaworks probe. I'm gonna see if I can get this through And it worked, so I probably didn't even need to buy the fireboard, but I'm a gadget freak. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. So let's get it back installed. All right, so I was able to get the probe through here and I fed the, uh, the bolt back over the wire. And let's see if we can get this baby hooked back up. Let's see. It is not. Oh, okay. There we go. We just gotta turn a little hard. So it looks like Thermaworks probes will work. But like I said, I'm a gadget freak, so having that fireboard is not gonna be a problem. I also got. I'm trying to get my probes paired up because my. Uh, 
fire board won't be here until tomorrow. I got a meter plus, but the probes are not pairing. So let me work on that and I'll get y'all back here in a second. All right, let's see what this fire is looking like. If we got a nice cold bed yet, it's been about 40 minutes. Where is my poker? All right, I found it. So it looks like we got a pretty decent coal bed going, which is a plus. And our temperatures are at 200 and 180. So let's start feeding it and start getting this temp up so we can start cooking. Throw this big one on. Let's see. And this looks like they are catching pretty fast. There we go. Now let's see how far um, this gets us. I'm probably going to want to cook this uh, beef shank at two, somewhere around the 270 range. So let's give this about 15 minutes and see where she settles in at. Okay, I added those logs on maybe not even five minutes ago. And now we are rocking at 255 over here, 225 over here. But I know uh, as time go on, that will even out. Now my meter probe would not connect, which sucks. But like I said, I like gadgets. So I have a um, Thermoworks smoke. So I'm gonna get that hooked up and that's what we're gonna monitor this cook on. All right. So like I was saying, I already seasoned I pre-seasoned this beef shank like three, maybe four months ago. So I don't have to do much to it, but I definitely want to put try out this uh, Cattleman's uh, Cajun Fusion. So I'm going to hit it with a little bit of this before I throw it on the smoker. There ain't nothing wrong with a little extra flavor. Let me throw this in the trash. Okay. Now watch. Oh, I was about to say my look. It's not even open yet, but it is. So let's get it shut. Probably things I learned to do off camera, but it is what it is. So basically we're just gonna hit it with a you know a little coat of this Cajun fusion. Add another layer of flavor, but that salt, pepper, garlic, and cow cover has been working on this thing for a few months. So I know it's gonna be seasoned down to the bone. It's, it's actually a bottle is open, but I don't think it was ever used. All right, there we go. Got it nice and seasoned up. So this side is where all the meat is. And if you can, right here, that's the shin bone. So, but it makes for a nice fatty piece of meat. So let's get it on. All right, so I went ahead and put some liners under these gloves because now I'm about to be dealing with all this heat. Um, all right, let's get her open. Got some nice smoke rolling. And I plan on throwing, all, all my wood isn't seasoned and I'm kind of drying it out now as 
cooks go on, but I don't mind putting unseasoned wood in here because I like a, a very smoky piece of meat, so I don't mind the um, a little bit of the dirty smoke because that's, a, that's what's going to go ahead and season her up. So what Thermoworks makes these little pads that you can put on top of the smoker and your um, thermometer won't, basically won't burn up or get too hot because it's shielded by that. Okay, let me bring you in a little closer, one sec. Okay, so here's our pro pork coming in. I just put it in a thick piece of this meat and we're gonna let it roll. Uh, I'm guessing we're gonna try to push this thing to two at least 200, maybe even 203. Temperatures dropped a little when we opened the doors, but that's gonna climb back up because this is an insulated firebox. I actually glad it happened because I wanna see how fast this thing can recover. And um, we got our thermometer up here, uh, Thermoworks smoke on top of this little pad. Never, never leave it facing the sun because it'll kind of mess up your screen. That's why I have it facing down. And then the good thing about this X4 is you get this little other piece on a lanyard. And I think you can walk uh, 165 feet maybe away from it and it'll still keep your temperatures in. Let's see, so here we go. Let's get it set up. So channel set. And we're gonna move this up to maybe let's go to 175. And at 175, we'll see if we if I want to wrap it or not. And there we go. We set for 175. And then shortly after, this screen will change to 175. Ding, ding, ding. Come on. Now that I said you're going to do it, now you ain't going to do it. <laughs> Just my luck. Well, maybe I set it to 165. Let me check. No, I set it to 175. Oh, and there we go, making me look like a fool. Now it's at 175. So we're gonna let this roll. I'm gonna say like maybe 45 minutes, we'll be throwing another log on. I'll check in in a second. All right, it's been maybe 15 minutes. So it's settled back in at about 2.35 and 2.20 on this side. So like I said, I wanna be cooking at about 2.70. So we are gonna throw on some more logs here and see if we can't get this temperature up just a little. So these that are in here are doing pretty good. So I think we need to add one more. Well, I don't wanna add one of these big ones. Uh, whatever. We'll add the big ones in there. If I run into any problems, I'll back the dampers down. So there we go. Let's wait for this to catch. And then we'll get everything shut back down. So I'm going to put some more inside the warmer to get them heated up a little. Actually, I'm going to open, oh no, it's catching. I was about to say I was gonna open up this damper into the warmer box and get them a little more hot, but this one looks like it's catching pretty good. So I think we are all right. So let's shut it back down. Okay, 
I went ahead and opened up this damper down here wide open and I'm just basically, you know, trying to figure this thing out. So we'll see where she settles in at and then we'll check back in. All right. So we've been going for a little over an hour. Temperature has fallen to about 240, so it's time to put another log on. Let me uh, grab some gloves here. Because I know these logs are pretty hot now. I opened the damper on the um, warmer box just slightly to get the temperature up because the last one I loaded was not as dried out as I wanted. So we are rocking about 290 in the, I mean 190 in the warmer. So that should be hot enough to get these things nice and dried out. Let's see, let me move this fire around so it's not, things are burning out. So the logs aren't fully burnt down they just need to be reworked so let's throw some smaller ones in here to kind of get the, this fire out all right so let's let this catch throw a few more on just a lot of these smaller ones they kind of there we go now we're catching and these should help the fire kind of stoke up a little there we go we back in business so let's shut it down we still got some logs in here heating up and let's see where uh, this new set of wood get us all right so with just that little adjustment, moving the logs around and adding some smaller pieces in, we jumped up from 250 to 275, which is exactly where I want to be. So we're going to let this thing purr along for who knows how long. I, I guess I will start adding a log when it gets to close to 250. Later. All right, we are rocking at about 265, and we are at the two hour mark. So I'm not gonna throw anything else in there until it gets about 250, 245. If it drops that low, then I'll add another log on. Let's see what this fire is looking like. Still doing pretty good in there. So I'm not going to add anything. I'm just going to let it keep rolling. As soon as that temperature hits, like I said, 250, 245, we'll throw another one on. And then once we get to the three hour mark, I will go ahead and open her up, give it a little bit of a spritz, and uh, so I guess you can see what the shank, I guess we all can see what the shank is doing. Got some uh, nice smoke coming out. I'm not really a huge fan of thin blue. I like a heavy smoke on my meat. So I think this is uh, rocking pretty good. I mean, it may be thin blue. I don't know, maybe y'all tell me if that's thin blue because I don't mind putting the um, the wetter logs on every now and then to get a good smoke in there. All right, so we will check in as soon as um, we hit the three hour mark. Ooh, later. Here we go. So we finally got down to 250. Still smoking away. But now that we hit 250, I'm going to go ahead and take one of these logs out of here. 
out of the warmer and into the fire. Let's see where this one gets us. Let's go with this one. Still got quite a few in here, so I think what we have in here would be good enough for this, this cook. Let's see if she catches pretty good, which is already catching. So, we about to roll with that and see where it takes us. All right, I'll check in at the three hour mark so we can give it a spritz and see what it's looking like. All right, we are at the three hour mark. The fire is at 250. But I'm probably uh, going to stoke it a little before I add any wood. That last bit I added was kind of uh, small. Let's see what she looking like. Ooh, wee. That is looking good. I just wanted to open it up and give it a little spritz. Let's get these doors all the way open. And it's gonna be a good pulled beef sandwich. Oh, put some new uh, apple cider vinegar and apple juice in my little sprayer here. And I forgot to pump it up. Give her a little spritz here. Let's make sure it don't dry out on us. There we go. Starting to get a little pullback on this side here. Still early. It's only. 133 degrees, so I'm not expecting too much, but it's looking pretty good. All right, let me get this thing shut back up. All right, let's see what this fire is looking like. All right, so let's move it around a little. So it's time to add another log. The one I added was a little small. Let's see what we got in here. All right, so this one, let's put this one on. It's a little bit bigger because I'm trying to watch a movie. So this will buy me some, some time. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, let's put let's put the rest of these at uh, least some more of these pieces in so, so we can keep some nice warm logs in and we don't run into any problems. Switch hands, some gloves, put the warm ones up here so I don't mistake them and put a cool one in. All right. So that big boy is caught already. Knock it back down. I'm about to get back to my movie. I'll check in. Next time the uh, temperature hits 250, and it's time to put another log on. Later. All right. We are back. We 
are at the three hour mark. Temperatures at 250, so it's time to put a log on. But it's also time to give it a spritz. Let's see what this baby is looking like. Ooh, look at that. Looking nice. I just wanna, uh, you know, keep everything moist. Getting some nice pull back. It's gonna make for a, a pretty good pull beef sandwich. All right. It has been six hours since this thing went on. <clears throat> the temperature has gotten to 169. I'm going to take a quick look at it and I'm also going to throw some more wood on because we got back to 250. Oh, let's sit this up here. I don't want to knock it over. Let's see how we're looking. Ooh, wee. Yep. See how that thing's shrinking up? Still fairly moist on the outside. So I think I'm going to go ahead and throw another log on and then wrap this baby up because I'm starving, man. I haven't eaten all day. I'm waiting on this, uh, this beef shank because I'm going to make me a pool beef sandwich. So let's check on this fire. I'm sure it's probably it died down a little. I actually went inside because it got hot out here. I know a lot of places. Um, uh, Hotch said, I think he said it was 43 where he's at. Man, it got up to like 83 here today. So I was out as long as I could because I'm actually not an outside person. I spend most of my time in my man cave watching movies and stuff. And uh, for some strange reason, the Shirley has made me get out the house. So that is a beautiful thing. So, all right, so let's throw a log on. I'm hoping this next log will finish the cook. I think I'm gonna throw this big one up here. I've been saving. And I think this big one here should last the rest of the cook because I'm going to wrap it up and just finish it off. I know I said I was going to pull it at 175, but um, I think 169 is close enough to go ahead and pull it and wrap it. And uh, I'm hoping we could probably pull it at maybe somewhere between 200 and 205 it should be pretty much fall apart to make a pulled beef sandwich so that log probably been in there about three hours so it's catching pretty fast so let me get oh. set up look at this thing so the pan is not long enough but maybe we can stretch it if we can't stretch it then we can't stretch it <laughs> we, oh maybe we can all right so we got it stretched out i got some bigger pans but i'm like well i got more small pans than big pans so i'm gonna try to make it work with this smaller pan so we're just gonna throw some of this um, beef bone. Let me turn this thing off. Hold on. It's, uh, it's basically letting me know that the um, the temperature dropped since I took the probe out of the meat. And speaking of probes, I finally got my um, meter probe to work. So let's see if we can get it hooked up. 
it wasn't working all day and now it's not working again give me a second let me, <laughs> let me get this figured out i'll be right back all right so this is going to be a task so i'm going to pour some bone broth in here to kind of braise it a little and um my other probe is in the smoker so i'm gonna get a sheet of foil and wrap this well get ready to cover this pan but i gotta put it in the smoker first because my probe is hanging out of the um inside of the smoker so let me bring you back when i get on the other side by the smoker all right the reason I say it's going to be a task because I got to open this smoker. I got to put this pan in here, put the probe in it, and then cover it with foil. Since my probe is has already been pushed through the, um, the little rubber piece. Let's see. Let's get over in here close to the center without hitting bone. Let me check the temperature. So yeah, we're up against the bone. The temperature is at 235. So let's go here. Okay. Checking the temperature in a few spots. So okay. Now we're at 170. So that'll be good enough. Let's see if I can get this baby wrapped up. task but we got it done now let's get it all shut back down the reason this thing is going off is because I set it at 175 so let's bump it up I'm gonna change the temperature to 200 all right so now we're set at 200 and um, we're gonna see how long it takes to uh, get this thing on up. All right, now I got my hands free. So basically, um, I put the probe in, wrapped it up, put some bone broth in. I'm gonna bring these temps back up and I wanna pull this out of here at um, 203. So I'm figuring by 203 degrees, all the fat will have broken down and I will be left with nothing but a nice juicy pile of beef for my sandwich. All right, this was a long cook. It took me 10 hours to finish off this big piece of meat. I lost light and I actually um, finished it in the oven because at a certain point when the meat's not taking any more smoke because it's wrapped, you can finish in the oven. But um, look at this big old prehistoric piece of bone. So it started way up here and, you know, throughout the cook, it shrunk down all the way to here. So it kind of looks like a big old lollipop. But uh, all the marrow is gone. Oh, yeah. Look how tender that is. It just pulls right apart. Let me sit this up here. I'm gonna make me a sandwich. I don't know if it's a Texas thing with the um, pickled onions, but I actually tried Chef Tom's recipe and I'm hooked. So I'm a, I'm a definitely a pickled onion guy. So we got some um, spicy pickles. Hit it with those first. And then we're going to get some of these pickled onions. 
drop those down. I haven't eaten all day. I've been waiting all day. Let me rip off a big hunk of this meat here. Look how easy it shreds up. All right, so we got this nice and shredded. Let's make us a nice little pile here. Boom. There we go. We got some pulled beef cheek, not beef cheek, beef shank. Let me get these gloves off because I need to get a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of barbecue sauce on it. I'm using the, um, Big Rick's Chipotle barbecue sauce. I know y'all can't see that, but the bone marrow is pouring out of this bone all over my counter. But I ain't stopping because I've been cooking for 10 hours and I haven't eaten all day. So I got to get me a bite. Surely held up well. I had zero problems keeping temperatures. So... That is a plus. All right. And of course, we got a nice potato, potato bun. It's about to be messy as hell, but I don't care. You see me licking my lips. That's a perfect bite. All right. I'm about to devour this sandwich. I haven't eaten all day, but I appreciate the ones who stuck around. Please, please, please give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I'll have more videos to come later.